Pleasure being here. My name is Giannis. Uh, over there is my co-founder, Yuris. Say hi. <laughs> um, yeah, we're from a recruitment technology company called HyperJob. And today I'd like to present our newest product called HyperScan, where we're using AI, LLM to be specific, as a and structured data processor to improve the matching of candidate profiles. So as a recruitment business, we know the needs and the problem very well. This is a recent test case that we got from one of um, our potential customers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so basically we were uh, supposed to look for the head of capital markets for a, for a property tech startup. In case you cannot read Elfish, it's, that's what it says on, up top. Uh, in one of these countries, France, Spain, Italy, and Portugal, with real estate experience, with debt financing experience, and with startup experience, plus preferably self-employed and preferably having lived in multiple countries. Fun, right? So if you've ever done recruitment, you'll know that some of these things, if we go to LinkedIn, which is the go-to, we we'll, can use some geography filters. Uh, we can enter some filters by industry. It actually says industry in Elfish. Um, debt financing, debol, it means debt in Elfish as well. But there's no way we can search for startup experience or somebody who's self-employed or having lived in multiple countries. And that's where Hyperscan comes in as a solution. Uh, <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, <laughs> let me, I'll, I'll just act as your translator, right? So basically what it says here, you can first go to LinkedIn, do your search as regular, and import and enrich your search results. Uh, that means get company information also about that profile. Then what we can do next is translating ask yes or no questions. So any kind of questions that we might want to filter for um, in, um, in the, the profile, such as have they worked at a startup? Yes or no. Have they lived in multiple countries? Yes or no. Anything that we can see from the profile can be answered. And then we can get answers from AI. <laughs> Um, so basically what it does then GPT uh, through our prompt logic goes through every profile and answers every question about every person. So we get a list we can work on now and then we can go check the profiles and pick the matches out of the list through filtering and sorting. M happens much faster. So the key benefits here, threefold, right? One is you can imagine it's much, much faster, right? You can process uh, CVs at, at much, much faster uh, speed. Uh, reach, you can process thousands of these. Like, there's no way I can, as a human, go through a thousand um, profiles in a day. The AI does that in about one hour. And finally, importantly, going back to all the themes we had at this conference already, it's the control, because the human still stays in control. And I'll tell you a bit more about that. So the role of AI, um, we're using AI or LLM to be specific as in a different role um, as opposed to general matching AI. Now, how does that work? The typical solutions that we have seen already um, uh, discussed before is sort of AI is a black box, right? We take a large data set, we build the machine learning model, and we get hundreds, even thousands of parameters, and kind of get a score of the resume. How close is this to something that we want to match it to? Uh, typically, maybe some sort of like 8.5, accept, don't accept, right? So the AI makes some sort of a decision about the profile based on its own parameters. Now, that is different from the way we use uh, GPT in this uh, case. We use that as an unstructured data processor. And what I mean by that, resumes, it's literally descriptions, right? And it's not structured data. There's not a single checkbox that says, I have worked in multiple countries. It's something that we need to read, right? But GPT is awesome at this, right? So we take that, we take this like unstructured information and structure it into yes, no, yes, yes, no. And then the person then can go through and decide, okay, these are the markings for everybody, then I can make my own decisions. There are several key benefits to that when it has to deal with uh, transparency, data, and control. First off, it's very transparent parameters. You set the parameters, right? The human enters the questions, what we need to do with the matching, as opposed to the unclear parameters which are inbuilt into the uh, native AI model, so to speak. We have full control over parameters. If I see that something doesn't work for me, I'm not getting the right matches, I delete it, I change it, I improve it, right? Full control, the same thing, um, you know, unfortunately, it's very difficult to kind of force the AI 
uh, to change any parameters. And then human decides, right? I make the decision at the end, as I mentioned, um, with the regular AI approach, it's the AI who decides. And this allows us to keep the bias in check. It's very explicit, right? The questions are there. So if anybody asks like, hey, what did you do to get those markings? That's right there. And uh, with the classical approach, it's more like a hidden bias. And finally, you can get started very quickly, right? Because we're using already developed LLM model, large language model. So we don't need a large number of sort of, uh, you know, a large data set where we build this kind of custom AI for that specific use case. It's literally taking that and answering just specific questions. Now, under the hood, the way it works is, for now, of course, we've gone with the first use case with LinkedIn profiles. We take only public profiles, so we don't use private links. It also has to do with GDPR, obviously. Then we pre-process that data, we enrich it, we do a, some other data magic to make the um, LLM kind of easier to understand. Then we have developed our own prompt logic, the way how to sp uh, kind of ask these specific questions and give instructions. Then we send it to, for now, we use uh, GPT as the large language model, but in theory, you could have anything here, right? You can have um, uh, Mistral's model or Claude or any uh, open uh, LLMs as well. Then we take answers, we post-process them, we show the results to the user, and the final step is the user gives us feedback. If they spot any errors, then they let us know. We go back to the prompt logic to improve it, and the cycle goes on. Now, the positive findings that we've had so far is that it does serve as great matches, and here's a good example. Um, in a recent case, we pulled in 900 LinkedIn profiles with a sort of large list of keywords. The people who ended up after hyperscanning in the top 30, their ranking in, in the LinkedIn search were like number 300. So the LinkedIn couldn't really guess what I was looking for, right? It's only after hyperscan that they floated up top. Uh, the top 30 did have a high hit rate, so about 83%. Uh, so for an experienced user like myself. And we're also checking, so we have a prompt engineer who actually checks the answers every specific kind of question. So far, we are recovering just about 90% in terms of um, accuracy. So that's obviously um, that's a pretty good result. Now, the challenges are, of course, in this specific use case, the data availability, right? We're using public LinkedIn data. Some of it is not available. Some of it is not complete. So you're, that's still a use case to be uh, improved. Um, about 1% to 3% typically from every search. Then ensuring accuracy, we're not stopping at 90%. We, you know, the market is saying it's good enough, but that's not enough for us. So we're working on improving our prompt logic to bring that higher, to kind of have different types of questions, different prompt logic. And finally, we have seen that there is a bit of a challenge in terms of user readiness, right? And that has to go back to this question that we discussed earlier. Do we have the digital skills, the basic digital skills necessary in the market to understand what this can do? It's a very, very good feeling to find somebody who says, oh, uh, you could do that? Great, but that means also a bit of education needs to follow from my side to say, yeah, and not just that, but many, many more things. But so far, it's not a major challenge. It's just that we've seen some people um, kind of struggle with that. Now, where are we going with this? Uh, LinkedIn is the first go-to, but obviously, CV, resume data, incoming applications, that's the next uh, use case we want to tackle. And also internal databases, you know, we've spoken a lot about matching in those. This could be a good layer on top of that. Um, then um, accuracy improvements, so enhanced prompt logic for different kinds of questions, as I said. And finally, improved UI and UX, so user interfaces, improved LinkedIn search suggestions, question suggestions, and finally, improved explanation of reasoning. Every time you see an, a, an AI in Hyperscan answer some question, it also gives it reasoning why it thinks that way, so you can always check that bias. And other use cases. We're also looking at sales prospecting, website data analysis, investor search for startups, startup search for investors, anywhere where you need to do some sort of matching of unstructured data to fit some sort of criteria. So if you would like, if you see any reason, any idea how you would love to work together with us, you're very, very open. Technical studies, pilot cases, trials, let us know. This is my LinkedIn profile. My name is Giannis Kralis, Giannis at hyperscan.co, or just come and talk to me or my colleague right there, Yuris, and we'll be, uh, it'll be a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much.